Former Team USA gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser has been sentenced to up to 175 years for sexually assaulting several girls. The sentencing hearing lasted seven days. It included emotional testimony from more than 150 victims. Before learning his fate, Nasser had this to say. Your words these past several days, your words, your words, have had a significant emotional effect on myself and is shaky to my core. I also recognize that what I am feeling pales in comparison to the pain, trauma, and emotional destruction that all of you are feeling. There are no words that can describe the depth and breadth of how sorry I am for what has occurred. An acceptable apology. An acceptable apology to all of you is impossible to write and convey. I will carry your words with me for the rest of my days. Well, in handing down the sentence, the circuit court judge said that it was her honor and privilege not only hear the powerful words from the survivors, but also to send Nasser away for the rest of his natural born life. As much as it was my honor and privilege to hear the sister survivors, it is my honor and privilege to sentence you. Because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. Sir, I'm giving you 175 years, which is 2,100 months. I've just signed your death warrant. Former USA national champion gymnast Maddie Larson joins me now. One of the many brave women who were able to speak out against Nasser. She joins me now from Lansing, Michigan. Uh, Maddie, I want to ask you first, how are you doing and what did you make of the testimony today? Hi, Irina. Um, well, it was chilling just now to hear Larry's words again. It was actually a little hard for me to hear in the courtroom because I was behind him and he was speaking very softly. Oh, no. But being able to uh, to hear that clearly, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it just gave me the chills. I, you say it gave you the chills, but for so many of us watching it, it was just so powerful every day for the past seven days to hear all of you come up and explain exactly how this affected your lives and what happened. You know, the, the ranch where prosecutors say that the abuse took place is now under investigation. What can you tell us about the environment there? Well, to start, thankfully, the ranch is no longer going to be the uh, place for the national team to train anymore. But the environment is um, one of the most isolated, negative, and just a very creepy place. And to have camps there, they have children's summer camps there, it's just kind of mind-boggling to me. And I didn't realize how, just how bad it was until I got out. Just how bad it was, you just, you didn't realize. I'm wondering for the women, men out there who might be victims of sexual abuse and assault, what's your message for other people and also for people who may never have experienced this but, but want to be a source of comfort and help? Well, uh, my message is, and I've, I've had tried to come to terms with this, um, but this whole experience here with all these other women, it's really taught me and kind of ingrained in me now that it is not your fault if you are a victim of any kind of abuse, sexual, physical, verbal, emotional, tell someone immediately, tell someone who can do something about it, tell law enforcement, and remember, it is not your fault. It's not your fault. I wanna ask you in particular, um, being able to confront him in a courtroom, what was that like? Uh, it was uh, it was a trip. So the first time, like I set foot in the in the courtroom, I kind of peeped in, and his face was the first face I saw, and um, I felt sick. And then being able to talk to him in person and address certain statements straight to his face was hard. But seeing 
how he's kind of a hollow shell of the man that he used to be. I felt so powerful being able to tell him how I felt. So you definitely walked away from that testimony feeling, feeling powerful that you were able to confront him face to face. Absolutely. I felt drained and tired and like I had just ran a marathon, but I felt strong. You felt strong. Where do you go from here, Maddie? I know the healing process doesn't end just facing him in court. What's the advice that you and the other women have taken from this entire ordeal? Well, something that's really helped me, and I really recommend this for all the other women, is is find a therapist that you uh, that you really connect with, and, and work through it in therapy. And it, it gets hard. It really gets hard. You got it. You got to get get to the core of your feelings, and you got to let it out to heal. So go to therapy. Um, I also want these women to continue talking and making sure that we can uh, find the people. Um, and hold them accountable who just let this happen. The people at Michigan State, the people at U, the USA uh, Gymnastics, people at USOC, the United States Olympic Committee, keep asking questions, girls, and we need to, we need to get to the root of this problem. Um, sending Larry to jail was, was great, it needed to happen, but there's more to be done. Maddie Larson, I want to thank you so much for your bravery, Maddie, and for coming forward and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you so much.